Hey, Wonder Hussy here. It's morning. I just woke up from camping in my car. But I could be anywhere. I could be in the mountains. I could be in the forest. I could be by the ocean. Well, probably not by the ocean. You'd be able to hear the tide. <laughs> or I could be. Where do you think I am? What's the landscape going to be? <gasps> the desert. Oh my God, shocker. I'm never in the desert. That's my friend Larry's car. My friend Larry is traveling with me. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Eminence Front X5. Check him out. We're camping kind of on this high desert plain surrounded by sagebrush. I'm not sure you can hear that. There's some fighter jets overhead. And there's some hot springs. So my friends and I are just kind of camped over here where we had our little campfire last night. Not too far, but also not too close to the hot spring tub. Because hot spring etiquette, I think, dictates that you don't... One simply doesn't camp right by the hot spring pond. You know, you give it a little space so that if other people want to come soak, it's not like they're crashing your campsite, you know what I mean? So we're camped there. Very short walk over here to one of the tubs. There's actually a few tubs at this site. Haven't been to the other ones yet, but we'll check those out too. Uh, one of my friends brought a telescope because this hot spring happens to be in the middle of nowhere where there's exceptional dark skies for uh, stargazing. So last night was a little overcast, but we're hoping tonight the heavens will oblige. Uh-oh, you hear that? That's Larry. Larry, paparazzi. <laughs> I'll post the pictures later. You you guys will understand why. Uh, oh, well. What Larry's referring to is the fact that, well, you've probably noticed that I have bare shoulders. Uh, this is a well-known naturist nudist hot spring. So it's a beautiful sunny summer day. I don't feel like wearing clothes. Why should I? So I'm just going to be mindful and keep a very tight crop for this video. All right, here's the tub that we camped by last night. And it's really pretty nice. It's got kind of a muddy bottom, silty muddy, but not overly gross. Not a uh, extreme amount of algae i mean there's some algae here around the side you can see but it's not healthy amount well i mean larry you're new to the hot spring scene if you've seen some of the pools i've seen this ain't nothing and the water is coming out of this graded off source which i assume was graded off by the man because it's really hot water coming out of it and i guess some drunk idiots have tried to get in and have well burned or maybe even degloved themselves in the process so, because of those few people, the source is totally fenced in, but it's kind of interesting. I don't know if you can even see through there. You can see the water and the pipe coming out. Oh yeah, Larry's got a thermometer. What's the readout on this source temperature? 122, 126. 122, 126, wow. 133. 133, oh gosh. It's leveling off about 135. Yeah, 135. Leveled off at 135. Ooh, that's hot. But by the time it uh, flows down this little channel here and ends up in the pond, the soaking pond, it's a lot more reasonable. And you can see while Larry's taking the reading there, somebody has uh, installed this really nice little wooden deck to sit on, take off your clothes, hang your robe on this. Somebody brought a friggin' tree out here. I mean, there's no trees out here, man. This is not forested land but somebody went through the trouble of bringing a tree out and bolting it to this bench so you can hang your robe and your clothes on it and it looks like people use it as a place to write their names you know i was here blah 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 somebody drew a magic mushroom imagine that okay that's my friend john he's here with us as well larry what was the readout on the pond 107 107 dang yeah. look here's the view if you soak in this pool though beautiful Okay, well, I came over here because we need to do some planning. I mean, we're camping at this hot spring, but we want to do some exploring while we're here. So we're going to check out the old atlas and see what kind of ghost towns or interesting abandoned ruins are in the area while we drink our morning coffee. And I have this delicious morning poppy seed muffin provided by John. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get to work planning the day's adventure. First stop, Austin, Nevada. All right, we're packing up. Uh, we're going to all take my rig into town to check out Austin. Uh, we're packing up a few things, and I noticed Larry is packing up over here on his tailgate, and he's got this really interesting new product that I've never heard of. So what is this? It's called the 
big, <laughs> let me see the side. The Big Larry Pro. The Big Larry Pro. What's the Big Larry, Larry? Well, it's a, Larry, that's it's big. a flashlight device in which you, Larry. if you're Larry, you can hold like this. But why is it so big? Because it's for Larry. <laughs> it's a flashlight. Oh, awesome. So, uh, oh, I see. It's well, an LED flashlight. It has, it has red capability as well. Um, has a pull-out uh, clip. Oh, cool. And uh, it really has a nice feature that I like a lot is this, uh, it has a magnet on the bottom so you can oh, stick it to things. Oh, wow. that is cool. And I was using it last night when I was cleaning up. So I had red light on last night and- uh, Yeah, unfortunately it's, it's bright daylight right now so we can't see the effect, but- You can see it flickering. But well, yeah. and you can see how big it is. <laughs> yes, matter of fact, <laughs> you seem to be fixated on the big part, but yes, it is an LED. Well, it's cool. The big Larry Pro. I mean, what am I supposed to think? You heard it here first. The big Larry Pro. All right. Well, Larry's got a lot of big gear he has to pack up. So while we're waiting for him to get ready to leave on our adventure, I'm going to go check out the other hot spring tub here. I know there's at least one more soaking tub because uh, I came here once before and like 2015 I think with my sister my sister and I were traveling around northern Nevada and we stopped by here just for a few hours it was really cold it was February so we didn't want to camp here because it was gosh I think down in the teens at night this is up around I think we're up around 6,000 feet pretty high elevation in this valley uh, and these mountains were all covered in snow and it was a cool experience I remember sitting in the tub soaking drinking hot cocoa with peppermint schnapps in it but we only stayed for a few hours I've never camped here Anyways, that tub that we soaked in, it wasn't that one. It was, I remember it being a metal stock tank. So while we're waiting for Big Larry to pack up his Big Larry, we're gonna go down here. Me and John are gonna go down here and check out this other tub. So all this area by these hot springs is all BLM land. And you can see there's little campsites scattered all throughout the sagebrush here and there. Plenty of room to camp out here. You're kind of far from services though, like, we're gonna go check out the town of Austin and that's like 20 miles that way. And that's a tiny town. I don't even think there's a grocery store. I mean, I guess we'll find out because Larry needs to stop at a grocery store or get some kind of grocery. So we're gonna see what they have in Austin. But to be honest, I don't even think they have a family dollar. So one thing you'd have to keep in mind if you came to this hot spring was, you need to bring in all your supplies, all your drinking water, all your food, ice, whatever you need to get through however long you're gonna spend here. because it's it's pretty friggin' isolated. Okay, we're looking for this other hot spring soak. And here is another fenced in source. You can see, I guess there's just like a hot creek that's bubbling out from the ground all over this place. And I guess these springs are popular enough that they had to fence off the source. You can see it in there bubbling. God, that's gotta be hot. And it's running down this little creek. I'm assuming maybe to the other pool, I don't know. I don't see hide nor hair of any other pools though. But there is this, where the flow kind of ends, there's this pipe running underground. So I'll bet you anything that pipe leads to the other pool. So it must be down here. It's like I'm following a treasure map. Look at, like when I look, was looking for the Fen treasure, but now I'm looking for the Hot Spring treasure. Next week on Hot Spring Hunters, Wonder Hussy, Larry and John stumble upon the stock tank. Here it is. Wow, we found it. It's a big stock tank with some two by fours boards sat on it, I guess like benches. It actually doesn't look very clear though. Kind of algae-ish on the bottom. But this is the one I soaked in when I was here before and it was really nice. So I guess it's okay. Let me put my foot in. Ooh, it's warm. Wow. And then downhill from it, I guess we're, oh, you can see here the hot water's being piped into the tub, uh, but it's, been diverted it looks like to sort of run down uh, into this little hot creek and it creates these really funky scummy natural ponds <laughs> yikes but my assumption is that you could probably move that big pipe uh, into this tub and make it hotter if you wanted to so it'd be a really nice pipe and hot nighttime soak if you wanted oh and look there's a little tap at the bottom so you can drain it out a little valve keep a good flow going all things considered, it's pretty nice. But that being said, I like the one up top better where we're camped. And to be honest, oh, Larry and I just came from another hot spring that's not that far from here that was 
Well, I gotta be honest, it kind of blows this place away. <laughs> but I still really like this place. I'm not, I don't mean to bag on it or disrespect it. It's a great place to camp. I mean, what's neat about this pond is there's this big fire ring right here. So you don't have to worry about fire safety. And there's even a stack of firewood, so it's ready to go. You know, this is a great place. I don't mean to disparage it. Anyways, I guess we should hike back up and see if Larry has finally packed his big Larry up and is ready to go. Boy, we didn't get very far. We just came down the road from the hot spring and we already had to stop because there's this historical marker. Check this out. It says there's this Tokima cave with a bunch of pictographs. Oh, not even petroglyphs, pictographs. Cool, it's a basalt outcrop on the east side of Pete Summit, 12 miles east, huh? So I guess you just take this road here for 12 miles. Uh, well, if we have time later today, that might be worth checking out. Who knows though, we're on a mission to go to Austin and that's, uh, that's our main focus today, so. We'll, we'll do that time permitting. All right, that was a lot of fun exploring Austin, but we finished up with plenty of daylight left. So before we headed back to camp, we decided to check out another attraction in the area. And nearby to these hot springs happens to be the geographical center of the state of Nevada. A lot of my videos, I start out by saying, hey, I'm here in my favorite place, the middle of nowhere. Well, I thought it would be cool to come to the actual literal middle of what many would consider nowhere. Now, the term nowhere is subjective and it's debatable because, well, anywhere is somewhere and nowhere is really nowhere, huh? But here we are in the middle of this vast friggin' sagebrush plain and it's pretty much the closest thing to the middle of nowhere <laughs> that I've ever been and supposedly somewhere around here there's not one but two uh, geological markers. One was placed by the USGS when they surveyed in uh, 1962 showing the geographical center of the state and then they did another survey in 2003 with more accurate equipment and placed a second marker. So both of those markers are somewhere out in this desert and by golly we are trying to find them but they're just rebar stakes they're not anything crazy big so it's gonna be really hard to spot them apparently some geocache guy came out and left geocaches under them too so it would be really cool to find one or both of them and leave something in the geocache so let me get my binoculars I mean man this is kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack you know a single rebar stake in a sea of sagebrush. Anything over there? Nothing down there. Golly, man. Yeah, and John's way the heck down there. Yeah, what's he doing? Oh, wait, he found, is he holding something up? There's a sign. He is, oh my God, we'll be right there. What is it? That's what he was holding up, but is that it? Well, we could just write whatever we want on it, right? Let's just write Geographic Center of Nevada and be done with it. Darn it, man. So we saw John holding the sign up and we got all excited, but then when we got here, it's just an old sun bleached, faded blank sign. It doesn't say anything. I don't know though. From the website I was reading, it's supposed to be just rebar steak. So we don't want to waste the whole rest of this day looking for this dang wild goose chase. I mean, we're close enough to the center of Nevada, but we're going to go up a little bit farther to the top of this rise where these trees are and if we still haven't found it we're gonna call it a day oh my god we're driving along and larry got all excited boom boom there there there's a, a rebar stake i think we might have found it this time let's see oh no he said nothing there god dang it not another false flag no there's no usgs marker yeah it was and that's not a rebar it, i mean there's a photo of it on that website i guess i can show you okay wait larry found a piece of rebar well i don't know i mean it was just a regular piece of rebar in the picture could that be it it's not as tall as the sake of rebar in the photo i found online it doesn't have any signage on it, so i don't know if that's it looking at the coordinates that we're, we're not where the coordinates say we should be so gosh i don't know larry seems motivated now very yeah, I kind of am too in a weird way, but at the same time, I don't want to piss away all the rest of our daylight. So why is it why is it always like this? We're 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 at a spot where the sun's in the right spot in the sky for us to go. Hmm, maybe another day. <laughs> wow. Well, we also have a hot tub waiting for us. That's true. That's true. But let's go a bit further. I don't know, maybe one more mile. All right. And then turn around. All right. Okay. Sounds good. 
Okay, we drove two miles farther on the road. We made some calculations based on this article we read and we did come across a stake, but it doesn't say anything, does it? Nothing whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know, it looks like it's just another fence post, but that could be, I mean, it is a green stake like that other one was. And it's two miles away from that. Start looking. Yeah. Okay, we'll look around this area. Okay, 2.2, exactly, 2.2 miles up the road. We did come to this mysterious rock cairn, which looks like a place that an ammo can and a geocache would be hidden in, but unfortunately there's nothing in there I looked. So, you know, it's getting late. <laughs> There's a hot tub waiting for us. Larry's bushwhacking around back there. We're uh, just doing one final check, but I think we're just gonna have to call it close enough. Well, we never did find the geographical center of Nevada, but that's okay. We did find something that's maybe even cooler. We're back at the hot spring, so we're gonna go for a soak and watch this friggin' amazing sunset. Holy crack. Just a refresher, here's where we are. Beautiful sagebrush plain. Larry. <laughs> Larry's Larry's clicking away on me. Wow, look at that. Amazing. All right, it's the next morning. We spent a beautiful night soaking in the hot spring. Uh, all these storms that have been plaguing us for the last few days blew away and we got a beautiful, clear, starry sky there was a perseid meteor meteor shower going on so we watched that through the telescope and we had a champagne toast with some of the other people we met here at the hot spring to celebrate the end of our adventure and the end of everyone's kind of summer adventures i mean it's august 10th today i left my house on may 28th and i really i stopped home for a few days in june just to go see you know the dentist and the doctor other than that i haven't been home all summer long i've just been traveling and having amazing adventures just guzzling from the tap of life and now yeah it's bittersweet i'm headed home larry's headed back to work and my friend john is headed home and then these other people we met here at the hot spring are also headed home from their travels in fact this woman here in the background i don't know if you can see that little camper really interesting woman she's been traveling since last october alone in her truck all around the united states but she's on her way back too now so we had a, a champagne toast at midnight dom perignon john was classy enough to bring some dom perignon champagne and we toasted to the end of summer adventures and you can see here i'm getting ready i'm unpacking my well unmaking my bed because I'm, I'm actually driving home i haven't been home in so long it's gonna be weird to be home later tonight wash all my laundry, clean out the car, and take everything out of my car and get it spick and span and tidy and ready for the next adventure. All right, we got the last of the Dom Perignon and some mimosas this morning. Cheers, fellas! Cheers. Yeah, cheers. To an excellent adventure! Yeah. <laughs> Till next time. Okay, I couldn't bear to tear myself away, so one more stop before we leave these amazing Central Nevada mountains. It's so nice and cool. Smells like juniper. It's 115 degrees back in Vegas. Remember, I haven't been in Vegas since basically May. So I am not in a rush to get back down there. So we decided to make one more stop at these caves. There's this cave up in the mountains behind the hot spring that supposedly have some really cool pictographs. Now, if you've been paying attention, petroglyphs are when they carve drawings into a rock. Pictographs are when they paint drawings on rocks using some kind of pigment. I haven't seen a lot of pictographs out here, so this should be interesting. Hiking along this little trail through this beautiful little pinyon pine forest. This is real cowboy country. It smells amazing. Pleasant breeze, blue sky. And then look at these rock formations we're coming up on. I think this is where the caves are. Oh yeah, look, there's even a little staircase. Okay, wow, I think this is it. It's all graded off, unfortunately, but we should be able to peek through those bars. What do we see? Oh, wow, look. Let's go right through these bars. Oh, wow, look, there they are. You can see a ton of them all over the inside of this cave. Wow, -wee. 
Holy cannoli, that's a lot of pictograph. Way more than I expected. And so many different colors. I don't know if you can see that. There's like that yellow and orange. And then of course the white. That is, and they're vibrant. That yellow and the orange are still so vibrant. All these, gosh, hundreds of years later. It's amazing. And there's water seeping out of the cave too, which is a precious resource out here. This must have been like a sacred friggin' site. Wow, what a cool archaeological site. I'm glad we took the time to stop here. This is neat. Larry said these pictographs look like uh, Madden, John Madden, when he draws out his little football game plans. <laughs> Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to attack the other tribe from the rear. We're going to split their flanks and penetrate. Is that, isn't that how they did it? Yeah, pretty much. So Larry was also pointing out how there's soot on the ceiling of this cave. So obviously, you know, native ancient people lived in here. And when you turn around and look at the other side of the cave, out the opening, you'll see why. This view, man. So we're way kind of up on this hillside, looking out over the Toyabe Mountains and beyond to the Monitor Valley. So you'd be able to see your enemies approaching from quite a ways. And it'd be nice and cool up here in the summertime. Oh man, I feel like these mountains are so full of amazing stuff. I could stay here for at least a month and I really don't want to go home. Hey, have you heard of Punch Bowl? Oh, Diana's Punch Bowl? Yeah, Diana's Punch Bowl. Oh, is, yeah, that's around here. It's supposed to be really close. Oh yeah, my sister and I, actually, there's, so there's this thing called Diana's Punch Bowl. It's kind of like a, I think it's a hot spring, but it's too hot to go in. It's supposed right. to be, yeah, it's in this area. My sister and I tried to find it once and I'm not sure why we were unable to, but I'm down to try. I mean, it's kind of on our way, Scott I think. Scott was mentioning it. Okay, all right, well, hey, why not? We can postpone going home a little while longer. Let's try to find Diana's Punch Bowl yes. before we go. Yes. Oh my heck. All right, I did not expect to be able to drive all the way to the top of this thing. I caught a glimpse out of the corner of my eye. So basically we're on this sort of, almost looks like a volcanic mound and there's this big hole in the middle of it that's Diana's Punch Bowl and I think it's full of boiling hot water. I haven't even looked yet though because I got distracted by the view from up here. I mean, even without there being a friggin' pit of boiling water, this is friggin' amazing. I'm gonna do a 360, check this out. I mean, there's the road we came up. And you can see we're kind of just in the middle of this super vast, desolate valley. But it does get kind of marshy and green all around where we are. And right on the other side of this rise here is the entrance to Diana's Punch Bowl. Man, I am ridiculously excited to go look at this thing. Oh, wow. Oh gosh. It's like this big friggin' hole. Larry, this is a family channel. <gasps> oh my wowzers, look at this. This is amazing. Oh my God, I mean, I don't know if any, how many people have fallen in here and boiled alive trying to get down there because it does look pretty nice. Unfortunately, you can see there's some litter floating in it. And I think you can even see steam blowing across the surface. That must be hot. Wow. Yeah, this is a really interesting formation. So there's this beautiful, almost Caribbean sparkling pond of uh, boiling hot water. And then it's in this deep, deep, deep layer of, I don't know if that's granite or what. And then you can see the desert behind it. I mean, we're standing, all this, this granite here is just like this weird lump. It's like this weird bump. So the, the pond is actually on the same level as the desert. Like we'll call it sea level. All this stuff is like calcified buildup around it, I guess. I don't know, man. All I can say is <laughs> there's this song by Moby called God Moving on the Face of the Water. And this reminds me of it, the way the light is sparkling on the water. I mean, I'm an atheist, but seeing something like this, whoo, it's amazing. This is what life is all about, you guys. This is Nevada! Ah, woo, holy cannoli, it is windy up here. I'm kind of afraid it's gonna blow me into the boiling water down there. I guess I better get down off of here. 
Just one more peak before we go though. Look how friggin' awesome that is. And there is no way to climb down there and I'm sure many have tried. Although if you look at it, there is graffiti on the wall there. So apparently people have gotten down there. I wouldn't be ballsy enough to try it. Holy cow, that was definitely worth stopping for. That was amazing. You can see it off there in the desert. <laughs> Just like a big old boil, but you would never in a million years guess it was full of that amazing water. <sighs> that amazing secret. In fact, this entire area holds so many amazing secrets. I can't wait to come back and explore it some more. But for now, Larry and I are headed back down south toward Vegas, the end of our trip. But we have one more stop to make, but that's another video. So. Stay tuned!